Hey there, I'm Michael Ridge, and I'm blending traditional living skills in a modern day with modern technology. This is my 11th consecutive winter in a teepee. So I've been living nomadic on horseback for 10 years. I started when I was 23 years old, and when I was 21, I met a powerful elder that had been living on horses for over 30 years. When I heard this notion of living and traveling in a way that's centered around the traditional food systems, that was a click. That sounds like what I should be doing. My mule, she's a tiny little thing. Call her pea shooter. She was a gift from the chief of police and enterprise Oregon all the way back in 2013. I've had her since the very beginning. She was the first critter I've ever owned in my nomadic travels. Hi Takawakusen. Were you sleeping? Taka and Sindahai here are Umatilla Reservation Mustangs and I've had them since they were babies. Rounded up off the range they were three months old, taken away from their mothers too early, and they grew up traveling with me in my nomadic lifestyle. And for three years, they traveled along my previous horses until they became my primary pack string. Horses are what allow you to make yourself available for a long time. Like you can backpack into the mountains, but you can only carry so much. The, each horse carries 180 pounds, so I could be out there for extended periods of time. That's what the horses do. They bring you to remote places for a long time. They provide your comfort on the top of a mountain. This video is sponsored by Dylan McGaster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. It was overwhelming the amount of knowledge that I did not have that was being presented before me. I had never worked with horses in my entire life and the horses that I received were also not trained and so I was learning as well as my horses and the wilderness of all places teaches you to do everything tight and right the first time. I'm not a purist when it comes to doing any of these things because I'm not pretending that it, this is the 1800s and so I'm going to use whatever tools are available at my disposal to, to do this, to get good things done. I love implementing those old traditional ways into this modern way, taking wild foods, processing them, and making modern cuisines with modern flavors and styles, or taking the traditional art of brain tanning and making modern style clothes. And to me, that bridges the gap between that tradition and modern. And that, I think, is absolutely integral to a sustainable future in our world. Each pack horse carries 180 pounds, and that's their max weight. So the things like my books and beads and my teepee and snow shovel and snowshoes, those are winter camp items, so I have to cash them. And when it comes to the things that I do pack, it's bare necessities. So things like a water filter, camp stove, a tarp for shelter, a good bed, rain gear, and then the shoeing equipment so I can take care of my horse's feet as we move. I never stay in one location more than two weeks when I'm out traveling on my horses it's because the stay limits in a lot of public lands are set at two weeks. While winter camp, I have permission from private landowners to camp, I stay a full six months. My whole winter camp fits into totes and barrels and it all fits into the back of this truck that my uncle gave me last fall. And then I can park this in a safe place while I leave April and I don't come back to it until the fall. Horses love to help with their terrible helpers. And so I have to set up this electric fence to keep them out of my immediate compound. And, and I keep that alive with a little solar fencer right there. So a lot of people ask me why a teepee? And the reality is there's nothing more adaptive and suitable for exposed living that's also semi-permanent. A teepee can handle extreme winds. As the wind pushes on this conal structure, it pushes the teepee to the ground. A yurt would be comparable, except it's way more weight and way more bulk. 
I used to live in a 16 foot teepee, but to include other people, to have friends come and camp and spend time, it was just really cramped. This is an 18 foot teepee. And while two feet doesn't seem to be a whole lot, it makes a world of difference. And so a teepee is not only 18 foot around in a circle, but it's also 18 feet tall. So the teepee is made of canvas. It's made by a company named Nomadics Teepees. They're actually not very far from here in central Oregon. Personally, I didn't want a painted teepee. This was the only teepee they had in this size and it cost extra, but it's water treated and fire treated and that's pretty important. You can see I got triple wall wired to where the stove pipe comes out and that's to keep it from flaming up. The first thing I did was cut a hole in it and stitched in vinyl. And that lets enough light in to where I can actually live. One of the major upgrades that I've gone through is solar. My solar panels go to just a small 12 volt lithium battery. So it doesn't have a huge capacity, but it charges my four powerful battery banks. With this setup, I can charge all four of them in a single day. Four of these battery banks last close to two weeks. I have a cell phone, I have a spotlight, I have a headlamp, I have a computer. So my solar setup only charges my battery banks and my battery banks charge everything else. This outdoor structure is just kind of a shelter storage where I can keep my belongings. In my travels, not only do I harvest wild foods, but I gather their seeds when it's time so I can plant them. And so I keep my seeds in these barrels out here. Every camp I make gets planted in the native roots, lilies, trees, berries, and nuts and fruits. Human beings are actually an integral aspect of a functioning ecosystem. So much of these wild foods that are all around us here actually thrive with harvest. And uh, a lot of these foods that I interact with throughout my travel season they are nothing like domestic foods, say the wild carrot. When I was introduced to the wild carrot out here, it was magic that happened. Not only was it something I had never known about before, but it was an incredible abundance and you could eat it fresh right out of the ground. It's 30 years old before it's ready to harvest. And so that traditional way of living was a selfless act in itself because all the food that you would harvest was planted there by your ancestors. This is a custom tool that was made for me and it's made up of two plow discs that a farmer would use to plow a field. And essentially this is just a, a tool for me to work hides. I have enough hides where people can come in periodically and uh, tan deer skins with me. So it's just my little outdoor setup. So far this year, I've made a fresh pair of buckskin pants and that's, that's these. I just really love making things and I've gotten really good at it over time. So I like sharing that. I've been fan funded for a long time. The largest expense that I have by far is the horses feed through the winter time. Hay prices have gone up a lot. When fall comes, I generally have a fundraiser. It hasn't been until recently where short form content and social media has been actually paying a decent amount for the videos I've been creating. So if it continues on this route, I may not have to fundraise at all anymore. My very first winter was with an open fire. When it's just you, it's hard to balance keeping a fire and warmth maintained while also staying busy, leaving and coming back. You don't want to leave a fire unattended. And so the wood stove has been a major upgrade. There's a whole inside shelter inside the teepee liner, which is crucial to holding the heat inside here. I literally stitch every air gap to trap the heat in here. You can see I literally poked a hole in my canvas tarp because on the other side, there's a rope that this liner is tied to. So there's a rope behind here that wraps around every teepee pole. And so this liner has to go through my tarp, around this rope and back through so it will shed water. All the panniers that I pack the horses up with when I'm out traveling with my horses in winter camp become storage and shelving all around the teepee. So these are all the boxes that I use to carry my belongings when on the horses. Window is definitely like the workstation. That's where I can set up a chair and, and work and do, do all kinds of stuff. So I've been working on a natural fiber basket. This is a combination of dogbane, which is a plant that grows along the rivers here. 
you can see that pretty red fiber and then milkweed which is one of the monarch butterflies host plant very beautiful very cool this is one thing that i'm giving away right now which is a buckskin jacket if you were to buy this it would be at least three thousand dollars it'd be very expensive it took four fully uh full-size deer skins to make this. I don't sell any of my crafts or stuff that I make. I could, I could make a lot of money, but I'd prefer to give those things away to those that have been generous in my journey. I have uh, preserves and foods that I've harvested. These are a native chestnut called chinkapin. They're really, really quite similar to hazelnuts. They're very delicious. And they're also seeds ready to plant. This is a Klamath plum sauce. This is an endemic species of plum that I processed this year, cooked down and made into sauces, which are like really good, sweet or savory. It makes an excellent barbecue sauce or jerky marinade. I infused huckleberries into five pounds of honey and made this mead. I don't really drink a whole lot of alcohol, but that is a delicacy. This looks like a normal bed that you would have in your home, but this is actually a camp bed that's an inflatable mattress. And it has this like memory foam on top. It's an inflatable mattress mattress and because of that layer of memory foam it acts like a normal mattress and it's so comfortable. I made this backpack quite a few years ago. One of my friends beaded all my animals faces on there for me. I also have this medicine root which I regularly uh, drink as a tea but this medicine root is over 200 years old. Even if I feel a little tickle in my throat coming on I'll drink some tea and I've rarely been sick. And then of course, some of the equipment that I travel with, I have to store in here, stuff that can't endure freezing weather. But then of course I got really good books and natural medicines people have sent me over the years that I use periodically. It's fun to participate in those stories that used to just play out on the land here. It's fun to tan hides in the same place where hides have been traditionally tanned since the beginning and, and to practice the same techniques. It's almost like an ode or a, a vigil to those stories. Thank you for watching this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.